I need your hand up there already. Okay. Say hi to the vlog. Put the camera away and do your job. Yes, sir. Down there somewhere. All right, so we just put the uh, new strut. Wow, this is low as hell this back is here. Weird. Well, that seat's so forward. His knees are going to be in the dash. Look, look at me. I'm I'm low riding back here. I'm gonna, <laughs> I am totally low riding. There's no back seat in here, and there isn't going to be for a couple of days until we can get some more parts. So, anyways, we put the uh, rear strut top mount back in. Dad's moving the smart car into place. We're going to go for a test drive and uh, hopefully it drives like an F10 M5 now, right? Or uh -huh. close to it. Yeah, we're, we're, Colt, they want to know the whole story, so we're going to tell them tonight, all right? All right, sure. All right, it'll be in this vlog, I promise. Computer, and it took it like an hour to fix it, so I don't know. Now, I had an alignment that I bought for Impala of Baltimore. You know that, right? That, that price. Oh, there's two of them. It's a dual exhaust. It has one on the other side. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. One Look of them's that. out, though. He needs to buy a new LED. The top right? Oh, I see it. Or, or his diffuser's in the way. Yeah, one of the other. <laughs> <laughs> Help yourself. It's a nice yeah. area. I think they're good people. A lot of competition, though. You want to be back in the video? No. No? You don't like, you don't like being on camera? No. All right. Cool. You get that? Where did you get that little camera? Uh, uh, Amazon, I think. This I, afternoon, I went to call you. <laughs> All right. So everybody's left. Don't worry. I will tell you the story myself. And here is what we have after today's work in the basement. We have the fender that we picked up in Detroit, which is why all of this happened. This thing weighs like four pounds. I mentioned that before. Closer visual inspection today. It's got multiple swirl scratches in it, a very minor ding right here below the trim. This piece was lifted from a 01 M5 that was totaled or something happened to it and this piece is okay. Uh, the, my battery light's flashing, so when this dies, I'm gonna have to put it on the charger and we'll talk later. But there's the fender. We have the C pillars out of the car, both sections of the rear seat. When the strut broke, it sheared off both plastic clips and then screws that hold the speaker in place. So he bought a new speaker that's on his way. A-pillar trim is here. By design, when the side curtain airbags go out, which live behind the A-pillars, this cracks. Uh, once it's set straight again, you can kind of see a line in it on the left side of that hole. We're just gonna glue that for now. Maybe we'll replace them later down the road, but I think I can Loctite that and it'll be fine. The rear deck is here. The headrests are here. Invoices for parts. And then a box full of small miscellaneous parts. C-pillar lights, the child safety restraints speaker cover, and then all the screws that held this stuff together. So that's everything we took out of the car, and it's not yet back in the car because he's waiting on new seat belts to arrive, a new seat belt tensioner, a new speaker. Once those parts arrive, we'll be able to reinstall all of that. We did get the strut top back in. That thing blew on impact from whatever we hit, so that's been fixed. So we went to Detroit. We got to Detroit. Drive was fine there. Picked this part up out of the middle of the hood. On the way back, 90 miles west of Cleveland on the Ohio Turnpike, east of Toledo, west of Cleveland, probably closer to Toledo. Um, we had crews at about 80, no faster than about 82. Uh, I was tired, I had leaned my seat back, reclined a little bit, shut my eyes, I was just drifting off to sleep. And I was woken up by the loudest noises I've ever heard, fire from the airbags detonating, one of us scream, you know, what the hell, or something like that. And uh, I looked up and the airbags were all, everything but the steering wheel and then the one for the passenger in the front dash had gone out. The rear ones are disabled from factory, so those didn't go off. Um, car was full of smoke from the airbags. You couldn't hear anything, you couldn't see anything. We went a good five or 10 seconds before we could see and at 80 miles an hour, that's a big distance. Miraculously, we were still on the road, still going straight. So I'm just yelling at him, you know, pull over, stop, pull over, what the hell? So we stopped, collected our thoughts, pulled over to the left median by the berm, and thought, 
airbags went off. We hit something big. I thought it was a truck tire. I was cringing to see the front of the car. Headlights blown out, you know, is the bumper gone? What the hell happened? The front of the car looks fine. You got down, looked at the bumper, looked at the spoiler, nothing was damaged. Hood was good, everything's fine. Look behind us, you know, we're at this point, we're in front of the car, looking head on at the car, and behind us, over here, also pulled over in the median, as you're looking towards the oncoming traffic on the right side, there's six other cars. Every one of them has all four tires blown out. One of them's leaking the radiator blue, and it's, it's dripping coolant all over the place. And then in the frantic hurry to pull over, two other cars, one had rear-ended another one. We got out, you know, talked to these people. What, what happened? What did we hit? Nobody knew. Everybody was fine. Um, we couldn't see anything in the road. We examined the road, no potholes, no debris, nothing in the berm. Everybody else, all three lanes, going by at 80 plus miles an hour, you know, six feet from us. They're not hitting anything, they're not swerving. So we were only pulled over for two, three minutes before we decided this is suicide, standing on the side of a highway if something's out there. So we just got in the car, got up to speed in the median and merged back into traffic. The uh, Canon died, so I'm gonna switch to the iPhone. At this point, the car's driving like shit. Um, the rear strut had gone through the mount again, so stability was horrible. It felt like we were driving a couch more so than a BMW. Um, the front was, he, he, I didn't drive it, of course. He said the front was just really loose, really, really weak, tons of brake shutter. So we pretty much got in the right lane, turned hazards on, and went about 50 to 60 miles an hour the whole way, which was hell. Got back, you know, the car's full of debris. It blew the door panels apart when the, when the curtain, and the airbags and the doors came out. Um, but we were okay. Miraculously, we got through that somehow. So anyways, the next day we got under the car, looked at it. Whatever we hit was on the driver's side. He had hands at nine and three, looking straight at the road, no texting. We had light music on. That's it. I mean, I, I trust his, his driving was not at all the cause. It would have, the same thing would have happened to me if, if we were in my car. Except my strut wouldn't have gone through the rear deck because they're OEM parts and they don't do that. So, uh, anyways, under the car, both driver's side wheels have sizable dings in them. They're no longer round. You know, they got bumps in them. One of the tires now has a big bubble in it. Um, the front driver's control arm, the paint got scrap, scratched off of it. I don't see any dings or the, the metal surface looks good. I don't know about the bushings. Uh, both front wheels seem to be pointed outwards like that now, so it definitely needs an alignment, which he's going to do tomorrow, Friday. Um, what else did we see? The, the stabilize the brace that holds the exhaust up in the back, both downpipes after the cats, that brace has a nice big chunk out of it. I'm going to try to put some pictures in this while editing if I'm not tired, not too tired. Um, so you'll see that. What else? I'm missing something. The frame got hit, which is why the airbags went off. It hit the driver's side frame, probably kicked that side of the car up in the air a little bit. Probably, car probably thought it was going to roll, which is why the airbags went off. Or just the, the impact of hitting it was enough to trip the blast sensors. Um, airbags stink, by the way. It really reeks. Um, yeah, so the frame has a nice chunk taken out of it. That's structurally fine. The paint got ripped off the frame. I'm pacing in my basement. I'm sorry for that. Uh, what else? Frame, exhaust brace. I mean, miscellaneous dings and chips of stuff that it hit under the car. I mean, and the worst part of it is the, the strut, which is now fixed for $15. You got that part for it. It's a Lemforder OEM E39 M5 strut top mount. Um, so that's installed, and that's fine now. But uh, what a freaking mess. I mean, I have never felt a car, any car, feel that unstable. It had tons of lateral flex in it, which is not something you ever get from a BMW. Uh, and that was just the strut. You know, that corner of the car is sagging, so the whole thing has lateral flex in it. But anyways, so list of parts that he needs. Well, we got the fender. That was the good part of the day. I'm using the front-facing camera, so this is going to suck. But we got the strut top in, as I've said five times. Um, definitely the alignment, which it's going to get tomorrow. Both of those wheels need to be fixed. So we put the spare on the front, which also has a ding in it for some reason, but it's a lot smaller. Neither one of those wheels seem to be leaking any air, though. I mean, it sat in my driveway for a week. Both tires look fine. I didn't put a gauge on them, but they're, they're not leaking air to the point where they look flat. That doesn't mean they're not leaking, but they're not horrible. I mean, it would be drivable. So, the front of the car still shudders a lot on braking, uh, which hopefully an alignment fixes. You know, when it's up on the rack, we're going to have to tell these guys, take a look at it. What do we, what's going on? Um, probably screwed up bushings and control arms or tie rods. Tie rods have 40,000 miles on them, which isn't much. I mean, if that didn't happen, I would say the tie rods are fine. 
but I don't know about now. So anyways, that was that's the story. Uh, we're both fine. The car will be fine. It's just going to take some time. We're going to hopefully get that fender on this week, get the new speaker in, get the seat belts in, reassemble the deck. And then it's just going to be a matter of replacing both interior door panels. The headliner has a small tear in it, which I don't know. That's a, that's a grand to replace an Alcantara headliner itself. It sucks. It's a horrible situation. He has horrible luck. But, you know, he's talked to people on M5 board that are going to get him these parts for it. He got all the seat belts and the airbags and stuff for like 150 bucks. So that's a great deal. Helps to know people on M5 board. So... Yeah, we're going to make some videos of, of fixing the car up and stuff. I made a video for the M5 today replacing the mass airflow sensors, which are in. I drove the car no more than about two miles, no more than 3,000 RPM, so I don't feel anything yet. Uh, I'll take a different driving style to see if I notice a difference with that. Uh, but I'll let you know. ordered several parts for the M5, some of which came today. Um, I'll show you in here. Where is it? This little bag of clips right here. I'm replacing the driver's door sill with a new M5 piece. I've got like little water spots under it and they're just kind of corroded. So I bought new clips for that, new clips for the door sill strip. The door sill strip is coming and some stuff for the trunk that is shipping tomorrow and I'll do an install video on. This clip's way too long. I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, hope you had a good day after Christmas and we'll talk tomorrow. Good night.